Aloha, and welcome to the 16th installment of the Pythagorean Order of Death uh, POD podcast. I, as always, am your host, uh, Jonathan Barlow G. And uh, today's episode, as you may be able to tell from the background, we'll be dealing with the Pythagorean Order of Death, uh, the POD material. And it'll be the third installment of such uh, subject matter in the in the podcast. Uh, it'll be a series of questions that have been pre-asked and which I've pre-written answers for uh, by a friend of the franchise named Ganma. He has uh, translated the omnibus into at least one foreign language so far and hopefully this will help spread the message throughout the world to other readers and other languages as well as english so uh without any further prattling on my part let's get into his questions uh i believe that there are six of them only so this is going to be a short episode, but I'll follow it up immediately by recording another episode with questions from Andrus Lux. So if you would like to, you can watch a short episode and a longer episode at the same time, back to back as uh, as I'll be recording them back to back around the same time. Again, my first question is, what were the core beliefs of the Pythagorean order of death and how did they influence the world? In its modern iteration, the Pythagorean order of death or POD has the core belief and practice of reading, studying, and discussing the Atlantean democracy material within the POD omnibus particularly the current and complete constitutions. The reason for doing this is to spread awareness about this format for a potentially global government based on ideal number theory. However, this is only the agenda of the modern iteration of this historical trend. Prior iterations of the POD have been run by different popes with different agendas at different times, if one accepts the premise espoused in the Atlantean constitutions that the POD is indeed a perennial and permanent component of the pattern woven on the ever-changing loom of history. As the POD omnibus evidence for this assertion, it lists Pythagoras and Buddha as the coinciding first popes and then proceeds to give an incomplete list of the many popes of the POD to follow, from then until the 59th such pope, Constantinus II, 317 to 361 AD. Of course, given there is no sensible direct lineage to follow, as the current and past curriculums of the POD differ so vastly, it is almost futile to assert the POD had a true past at all. Nevertheless, again, this is what the POD material itself asserts by tracing its lineage to Pythagoras, his school, and the curriculum he taught in his time. If one were to compare the curriculum taught by Pythagoras in his school 2,500 years ago to, say, the modern Freemasons, there would be definite parallels in both the letter and spirit of their teachings. However, the POD is not technically Freemasonry, and so there are fewer parallels between the ancient teachings of Pythagoras and the instructions of the modern POD omnibus than between ancient Pythagoreanism and modern Freemasonry, although both the old Pythagorean college and the modern POD share a faith in ideal number theory. So, if you like, you could assert, along with the POD omnibus itself, that the core beliefs of the POD are now and always have been a faith in ideal number theory, 
and that their influence on world events since the lifetime of Pythagoras has been to encourage the learning of math, geometry, and physics. How does the Pythagorean order of death define its mission? And is it good for the world or not? The present POD defines its mission succinctly as to read, share, and discuss the works on Atlantean democracy. So the question of, is the POD doing good for the world or not, depends entirely on whether Atlantean democracy would be good for the world or not. Obviously, I believe very deeply in Atlantean democracy being a better and more preferable future outcome for humanity and tending toward a more utopian civilization as a whole. But then most of the current alternative future outcomes for humanity and civilization as a whole are projected to be very bleak and dystopian. Relative to these other options, I consider the POD's role in teaching Atlantean democracy and Atlantean democracy itself to be good for the world. How does one become a member of the Pythagorean order of death? All that is essentially required for anyone to join the POD is for them to read, discuss, and disseminate the POD material about Atlantean democracy. If one reads the POD omnibus and wishes to proceed further, there are physical, cybernetic, and astral options available at present for groups to meet and function in mimicry of Atlantean society. If one reads the omnibus and wishes to have nothing further to do with the POD, they can leave and go about their business without any more fear from having read the POD works than any other fictional novel. There are no prerequisites for membership in the POD. Anyone can join. This means that men and women, old and young, of all creeds and cultures from all over the world are all welcome regardless of any religious or political differences there may be between them. So, in the POD, a feverish hedonist may sit beside a devout celibate on the same bench in the Atlantean Senate, and so it indeed must be. Moreover, anyone may become Pope of the POD, even if they are, as Freemasonry calls them, a stupid atheist. All materially manifest differences are seen as merely temporary compared to the eternally constant similarities between all beings, even between the living and the ghostly memories of the dead. How does the Pythagorean order of death view the concept of death? In the POD's three Egyptian masonry rituals, it is described that death is a threshold that can be crossed back and forth using magic, and that, therefore, in essence, its permanence is a myth. In these rituals, it morally prescribes against necromancy, or specifically, the creation of a clone or golem without imbuing it a soul however, at the same time, explains this to have occurred in history anyway, despite being wrong. So, on the one hand, death is true, but detrimental, and on the other hand, immortality is fictional, yet ideal. Unlike ancient Pythagoreans, the modern POD does not preach any specific form of metempsychosis, or transmigration of a soul in any form of afterlife as being a required belief for membership. Again, the POD is open to all, everyone from a strict adherent of reincarnation to a devout believer in heaven and hell may enter. It is not the specific goal or objective of the POD to divide people based on existing beliefs, but to add on all sides equally 
a new nuance to these beliefs, the Atlantean democratic social model that, hopefully, will ultimately benefit all. Does the Pythagorean order of death have any specific goals or objectives? The current POD only advocates reading, learning, understanding, and spreading the Atlantean democracy material writings. Atlantean democracy is a model for a potentially global format of government based on ideal number theory. What Atlantean democracy amounts to is a small, pluralized, but centralized, chief governing group with virtually no authority to enforce its rulings onto anyone outside of its very small sphere of influence. <clears throat> the desired and intended result is the creation of Atlantean society, where state force is minimized and individual liberty is maximized. This, at least, is stated as being the goal and objective of the POD within the omnibus and constitutions themselves. How does the Pythagorean order of death impact its members' lives? The POD impacts its members' lives to whatever extent they want it to. Each reader chooses their personal level of involvement. As I say, if someone reads the omnibus and thinks, this is not for me, they can walk away and never worry about the POD again. Likewise, if someone reads the omnibus and wishes to continue further by helping the current POD and its cause, there are many ways to do so, not the least of which is sharing and discussing the omnibus itself with others. In practice, the POD claims to allow its members to vote telepathically by conscious manifestation, informing the future of reality for all life on Earth. However, such a concept is rightly meaningless to anyone who has not read and understood the POD omnibus. And those were Ganma's six questions. Uh, I hope everybody who's tuned in has enjoyed hearing those answers. I'm going to be chopping them up into smaller segments and uh, releasing each one as a clip uh, later this evening. And I should have this uh, episode up by uh, either tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. Mm, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. So thanks everyone for tuning in. And I'm about to record the next episode of this uh, line of questioning right now so hopefully you'll tune into that right after tuning into this and if you do then i'll see you there and if you don't then i won't so have a good one either way and uh peace <laughs>